A grade. One is like barely passing, and zero means you, not, nothing there. And so this is a list of the kinds of treatments that are offered. So family-based treatment, which I'll talk a little bit more in a moment about, there are five randomized clinical trials in the literature altogether. Um, pretty good evidence. That's an effective treatment. For bulimia, those two trials had both had family-based treatment. One of them was good. One of them showed no difference. It's probably reasonable to consider that as a treatment. Other family treatments uh, uh, have only case series data. Maybe they're useful or unknown. For adolescent-focused therapy or that kind of individual therapy that I described as being function about, about adolescent development and autonomy, um, two randomized clinical trials. Although family treatment was superior to this form of treatment, the patients didn't do badly. And so we have to say that it's a reasonable treatment. Um, no, we have to. We're lucky. There's, there's an alternative. That's a good thing. Uh, for bulimia, there are no studies um, looking at focus of individual therapy of that type. CBT, there are probably about 50 or 60 studies in the adult literature for bulimia showing that CBT is a great treatment for that disorder. There's only one, and I talked to you about that one, the one that Simon Gowers did in the UK, and it looked like it did as well as other things, so it's possibly useful. For adolescent bulimia, the one study that was done by Schmidt looked like it was a useful treatment, um, and there are some case series data that we published here from Stanford, so it's possibly useful. Antidepressants. Medications are often described as being or prescribed uh, as part of treatment, and um, I'm, I'm a child psychiatrist, so I confess I do prescribe medications, but I hardly ever prescribe them for eating disorders. And here's why. There's no evidence <laughs> that they're useful. Um, so for anorexia, there are no RCTs at all, none. Um, and for bulimia, there's only one small case series, 10 people. Um, and they, 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 what I'll say about that is that the only thing you can say is that the medication was tolerated. Atypical antipsychotics, this is risperidone and, and uh, uh, medications of that type, which you probably, maybe some of you have heard about. There's been one RCT, it's not published yet in adolescence. Um, um, I saw a report of it at the Academy of uh, Child and Adolescent Psychiatrists. No, not useful. Uh, no specific benefit. Um, and for bulimia, it's not been studied. Um, nutritional counseling advice often. Um, thought of as essential. Um, strangely, there are no RCTs at all on this subject um, in adolescence, and the two in adults are contradictory and small. Um, for bulimia, there's no studies at all. Psychiatric hospitalization. Um, we don't do psychiatric hospitalization here. We only do medical, just to be clear. Um, there are two RCTs. The one I described by Gowers and one was for an adults. Systematically, psychiatric care uh, was uh, in, in hospital wasn't better than uh, outpatient treatment. Believe me, there are no such studies. Now you'll notice I haven't written anything about day treatment or residential treatment. There are no studies. So when you hear about those people talking about the effectiveness of treatments, they're really talking about information they gather from their own resources and they're not systematic studies. One of the things that's been of great interest to me in my development as a person who treats adolescents with eating disorders has been the changing role of the family. Um, when I came to Packard in 1993, when I first finished my training, I came out of a model of treatment which really saw parents as being, you know, pro, pro, at best a nuisance and at worst bad. Um, and we were the good people who could help the, the patients. Um, and they come into our program, we get them all well, and then they go home and look what those parents did. You know, I have really changed my thinking on this, as any of you know, any of my work at all. And it's changed because of my experience and because of science. Um, Sir William Gull, in 1873, who was the first person to describe anorexia nervosa in the medical literature uh, in the, uh, wrote, the patients should be fed at regular intervals, I won't quarrel with that, and surrounded by persons who would have moral control over them, sounds reasonable, relatives and friends being generally the worst attendants. 
Um, any, any relatives or friends here feel a little bit? This was the view. Now, let me remind you the context of this. There were also, in schizophrenia, double-binding mothers. In autism, refrigerator mothers. It's always mothers, really. It says parents, but it's, it's mothers, usually. And um, the, the reality is that was the view. Um, and this was right in line with it. Charcot in France, the French often being more dramatic than the English, said it even more boldly. It is necessary to separate both children and adults from their father and mother, whose influence, as experience teaches, is particularly pernicious. Um, so in France, to this day, you often get hospitalized for months at a time, and you're not allowed, to, as a parent, to even visit your child or make a phone call to them for a first month or so. Um, the, the treatment that I described that was developed um, in, published in 1987 by Gerald Russell and their group is a family-based treatment where we really don't theorize as to, you know, what caused the problem. We really focus on what needs to be done. And parents are seen as a resource. And there's no blame directed at either them or uh, at the adolescent for having developed this problem. And other family members play supportive but important roles. What I want to, the only other thing I want to say about that is every study that has looked at family treatment, which are the five studies that I talked about, has used this model. And so if you are, if you're looking for a counter to Gull and Charcot, the evidence of science says they were wrong. Um, I want to say something now about what we can hope for. This is just a little slide about early intervention. This is a, this is a, this is a series of, uh, I don't know, I think 20 studies that looked at outcome in anorexia nervosa over time. And these are months on the horizontal axis and the percent of patients who had anorexia on the vertical axis. And you'll see one thing I want to point out, which is you basically have to get better in the first five years. So age 13 to 18. Doesn't mean no one else ever gets better after that, but on average, very difficult after that. Early intervention is critical. We're doing a number of studies at Stanford, which I hope will contribute to the knowledge base that we, the limited knowledge base I've described to you about treatment. Um, we're doing a study comparing family-based treatment to CBT and to interpersonal individual therapy for adolescent bulimia. As I said, there are only two studies. Um, this is done in collaboration with the University of Chicago. Um, and um, we've left flyers for out, out there about that study. It will only be the third uh, study. It will be the largest one. It will be about 170 people. We're doing a study um, comparing family therapy, the type I described where parents are empowered to take care of the problem, compared to a more uh, uh, th family therapy that looks at systems and processes in the family. Um, and that's a study that the NIH just funded. It's at seven sites around the country. We're one of them. Um, and we're doing a, a novel uh, study for adults, older adolescents and adults, um, using something called cognitive mediation therapy. Um, compared to CBT, and I'm going to let Dr. Fitzpatrick describe a little bit more about that when she talks about CRT. To end with, I'd just like to, to remind myself uh, that something that Arthur Schopenhauer said, all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as self-evident. Thank you.